stopped at Burger King uh, on the way out. We got some uh, English muffin sandwiches. They were good. I had some coffee that's been sitting there about three days waiting for me to come get it. At first it was pretty bitter, but I drank it down and it tasted pretty good. Kind of got me sick to my stomach and sloshing around in my gut. But other than that, I'll be alright. So, we'll check back with you in about, I don't know, that many more miles. We'll give you a 411 on our progress. My name's Terry. I'll be your tour guide. Can you see? It, I'm trying to uncrowd it just a little bit. We've got an eagle, we've got these horses. That's a neat little platter. Look at that. I'm going to pull these back where you get a really good look. Oh, it's got more. It's got uh, one, three, four, five, at least five nymphs. All right there. Five virgins. All right. Other conch right there and talk about sweetheart and how much we're going to give it how much on it. Start the bid, please. You name it and we'll go. Anybody give me uh, 70, 65,000? This is what, 53, 53, something like that, 53,000 retail. I can get some of the numbers mixed up, but I remember that one. $53,000. And how much on it? Help yourself. 1,000 on this fountain with the nymph. And I'm going to get $2,250, $2,500. Something like this. $2,750.
Tell time. <laughs> he's, he's good. <laughs> <laughs> 
Today that's an indoor mall. That's our largest indoor mall. 14 with all the little shops. And on the right, the red brick building is a customs house built in 1891. Beautiful Romanesque revival architects, one of the loveliest buildings on the island. And the roof of this building is rather interesting. It has a very steep slant. It was built that way in the infinite wisdom of our federal government to keep the snow from settling up there. And I'll tell you, they've done a great job in all my years in Key West. They've never seen any snow up there. I wonder, wonder why. On the left, this little area is known as Clinton Square and the monument in the center. That's a memorial to the 167 Union soldiers that died of a yellow fever epidemic during the Civil War. And on the right is Mel Fisher's Maritime Museum. Are you familiar with that name, Mel Fisher? The world's greatest treasure hunter. Let me tell you the story. In 1622, Two Spanish galleons, the Adoncha and the Santa Margarita, went down in a hurricane 30 miles west of here. They were part of the Spanish Crown's treasure fleet. 1985, Mel Fisher and his crew, after a 16-year search, discovered the mother load of the Adoncha with over $400 million in treasure. Much of the gold, silver, and emeralds that he found are on display at that wonderful little museum. Mel Fisher's Maritime Museum. On the right behind the white wall, this used to be military property. Private residential area, beautiful homes. It's known as Truman Annex, named in honor of our former president, Harry S. Truman. And on the right are the presidential gates, and here's a salute to the presidents. <laughs> Presidential gates are open only to U.S. presidents. The presidents that have gone through there are Howard Taft, Harry S. Truman, and John F. Kennedy. More recently, former President Jimmy Carter, 1997. And on the left is a magnificent banyan tree. Take a look at that tree. Isn't that something? That tree's more than 100 years old. It's one of the largest trees on the island. Set back from the street is the Key West Post Office, designed in 1985 by local architect Sonny McCoy. Hi, right, we're off and running on our tour of Key West. 100 points of interest, great way to get to know our beautiful island of Key West. It's on the left, on the corner, the tan building. The porches that wrap around the house to keep it cool, that's a distinctive feature of the Bahama style of architecture. And on the left are two identical Bahama-style homes built in 1873 by Captain Elliot Pierce. Why are they identical? He had two daughters, didn't want them to fight or squabble, so he built them identical homes. <laughs> and on the right across the street is the Key West Public Library that dates from 1959. And right next door is a lovely little palm garden, 25 varieties of palms in that beautiful garden. These homes on the left have something in common with the homes on the right. The underside of the porches, they're all painted blue. They're painted blue like that for a number of reasons. One reason is simply to beautify the homes. They do look quite lovely with that blue color. A second reason is to keep insects from nesting there. Bees and wasps will not nest there if they're painted blue like that. And a third and final reason, there are many people in the Caribbean who believe that if you paint your homes blue like that, you'll be protected from evil spirits. Ooh, evil spirits in the Caribbean. Let me show you a good example of restoration on the left, on the corner. This is the Thompson home built in 1880. The front of the house is very beautifully restored. Now, if you look to the left wow. and compare the side to the front, that's a restoration project in progress. Once they finish, that'll be a wonderfully, beautifully restored home. And on the right, up the driveway, is a gumbo limbo tree and the bark of that tree. It's red and peeling. That's why we call it the tourist tree. <laughs> ah, the old tourist tree. All right, I had on the left another large and beautiful tree. Anybody know what kind of tree this is on the left? It's a rubber tree, a big oh, old rubber, rubber tree. tree huh? 
And directly ahead of us, this large area is known as Perry Court, military property since 1833. Back then it was an army post, today it's housing, primarily for the Coast Guard. And the Navy, they've been here throughout our history, so here's a tribute to the Navy. The streets in Old Town, they were laid out in the early 1800s, and the streets are quite narrow at times. Homes are both very close together, sometimes only a few feet apart. These homes were actually built by ship's carpenters. The ship's carpenters, they built their homes just like they built their ships, snug and trim. Instead of nails, they used mortise and tenon joints to hold the houses together. That allowed the houses to give in high winds. Even though they weren't trained architects, they managed to skillfully combine. They were skillfully combined to build the homes that they have here. They combined different styles of architecture. Very beautiful homes. All right, we're in, this is a Libby Street, a little side street. Let's take a look at uh, some of the homes and some of the features of the homes. On the left, these homes are very typical of Old Town Key West. What they have in common is the fact they're all more than 100 years old. They're all made of wood. And up on the roof, they all have tin roofs for two main reasons, to collect rainwater and to prevent the spread of fires. And on the left in front of this White House are three Traveler's Ponds, more than 50 varieties of palm trees on the island. Those are the Traveler's Ponds. And ahead on the far left corner, these beautiful pink flowers are pink oleander. You find them all over the island. They're really quite beautiful. And on the left, these small orange flowers are dwarf poinsettias. In the 1940s, there was a lot of military activity on the island because of the Second World War. And the military decided there was a need to have a reliable source of fresh drinking water on the island. So they built a pipeline from Miami all the way down to Key West. That's where we get our drinking water today, through that pipeline. But prior to 1940, the only source of fresh drinking water, that was rainwater. They would collect the rainwater off the roofs of the houses and buildings and funnel it into the cisterns. Have you heard of the famous key lime pie of Key West? On the left, this little tree in that big pot, that's a key lime tree. And the small key limes, the juice of the key limes, is what's used to make that wonderful and delicious key lime pie. Do try it, it really is uh, very tasty. And on the left, this beautiful crimson color is a good example of bougainvillea. We have many different varieties of bougainvillea all over the island. And on the left, these multicolored leaves, <coughs> yellow, green, and red, these are crotons, and they're indigenous to the South Pacific. And on the left, this large tree alongside the White House is a sapodilla tree. From that tree, we get chicle to make chewing gum. Have you heard of chicklets? The gum from the chicklets come from that tree right there. Now this corner is a quiet zone. I'll be right back with you. Okay, we're officially out of the quiet zone. Someone on that street corner doesn't like to hear the con train uh, 20 times a day. So we uh, need to take that into consideration. We're on Eisenhower Drive. This is something of a dividing line on the island. On the right is the Old Town Historic Preservation District. And on the left, beyond Garrison Bight, it's a new town area set up primarily in the 30s and 40s. And much of the new town area, as well as the military bases, are landfill. We had many land filling projects in Key West to increase the land area. It's been due to population increase. Ahead is White Street in the 1940s. This was considered the outer boundaries of the city. This area was and still is a Cuban neighborhood. Street here in the 1940s. It was considered the outer boundaries of the city. Very wild and still is a Cuban neighborhood. Enjoy the feel and flavor and dancing in the house. Here's some Cuban music. <laughs> So this area is a Cuban neighborhood. You hear Spanish 
spoken throughout here. They're wonderful little Cuban cafes, restaurants, and bakeries. On the right, this yellow and white building is a Glen Archer Elementary School, built in 1924 as the first high school in Key West. Tiger mascot in the front that was built by the high school welding class back in the 1980s. That same high school welding class, they built the mascot in front of the present day high school on Flagler Avenue. That's a giant conch shell. I know what you're probably thinking. You can't be in Key West more than 10 minutes without hearing that word conch. And that's spelled C O N C H, but it's pronounced conch like a conch on the head. First settlers, they were from the Bahamas. They were known as conchs in the homes they built were called conch homes. What is a conch? Well, if you really want to know, conch is a sea animal in a large shell, something like a giant snail. Meat of it is edible, really quite delicious. You can make all kinds of meals with the meat of a conch. Conch fritters, conch chowder, conch steak, all really quite delicious. So everything in Key West is conch. If you're born in Key West, you're actually known as a conch. You live here seven years or more, you're freshwater conch. <laughs> High school football team are the fighting conchs and the drill team members are the conchettes. <laughs> and of course, you're riding on... Oh, there you go, the world famous conch tour train. Everything is conch in Key West. Okay, so, uh, next on the left is Higgs Memorial Beach. There's a picnic What's area. Going on, Playground and tennis courts are all located here. And on the left, the picnic area, the artwork that was done by students. Was a historic work. On the left, in the 1800s, there used to be a large city beach. But over the years, because of storm damage, man-made structures, and tidal flow changes, the long continuous beach has been broken down into several smaller beaches. On the left, Higgs Memorial, one of the many beaches on this side of the island. Great little place to come and spend the day. Little bright sun, shiny days to soak up the sunshine. It's a little bit of an hazy overcast day today, but normally with the sun, shiny days, hundreds of people come out to enjoy the beaches. It's my favorite thing to do in Key West, go to the beach. And all of you, right at this very moment, you're officially the stellar most tourists in the continental United States. On the left, the white building is the Cuban Club, built in 1900 as a patriotic, beneficial, and social club. For the Cubans of Key West, some of the best dances in the history of the island were held up on the second floor level. An area directly ahead of us in 1880 was known as Gato Village. Eduardo H. Gato, we hear that name once again. He was very prominent in the community. He built houses, stores, and trolleys. There was many workers. He actually owned the largest tobacco factory on the island. He had more than 500 people. Around those large tobacco factories that would build homes, that would be called the village. You're right here in 1880, this was Gato Village, the largest of all the villages on the island. This was the part of the Cuban community, it was a bustling city within a city. And on the far left corner, above the treetops, what do you see? Key West Lighthouse, built in 1847. You can climb 88 spiral steps to the top up there for a panoramic view of Old Town Key West. Very beautiful view from up there. And below on ground level, in the corner, is uh, Lighthouse Keeper's Quarters, built in 1887. It was built for two families because it took two families to keep it operational 24 hours a day. Head on the right behind the brick walls, the Ernest Anyway House, bought for Ernest and his wife, Paul, back in 1931. Inside are very beautiful gardens, the first swimming pool of Key West, and many cats, some descendants of Anyway's own six toed cats. Anyway lived on the right for 10 years, did some of his most productive writing here. <coughs> <clears throat> and after his tragic death in 1961, his widow sold the property to family friends who opened it up as a museum. And on the right, the right corner will be a white building with green trim as the Green Pirate Bar, one of the oldest bars in the Florida Keys. This building dates from 1890 when it was originally a grocery store. 
in a bottle on the wall there that says, see the lower keys on your hands and knees. And you get a different perspective of life from the great Perry Barn. On the right, this house with the lavender shutters, the Dr. Joseph Otto home. From the late 1800s, conservative. Queen Anne style of architecture for a beautiful home. Then on the far right corner, this white house is, um, this white building is the United Methodist Church of Key West, built in 1877. Makes it the oldest church structure on the island. And on the left in front of this house is a large terracotta jug called the Tina Hone. They were used in Key West. And on sailing vessels, a store fresh. And ahead, we're going to cross an intersection, everybody. And look to the right, down the street, a block and a half. And what you'll see down there, Solaris Hill, the highest point on the island. A magnificent height of 18 feet. Up on sea level, imagine that highest point in Key West and in the Florida Keys. Ahead on the far left corner, the white building of Sloppy Joe's Bar. One of the most famous bars in Key West, or as heavyweight's favorite bar to go to. After a hard day of fishing, he would ride in the morning hours, fishing in the afternoon and evenings, right to Sloppy Joe's for a few beers with his buddies. Something I recommend you do if you're walking on Duval Street later on is to walk into that hotel, grab the elevator, go up to the seventh floor. Observation deck, very beautiful view from up there. Panoramic view of the old town area. The sunsets from up there are also quite, quite beautiful. Nineteen forty-seven, Tennessee Ernie Williams, America's foremost playwright. He uh, stayed at the hotel, La Concha. Here he finished writing his play, A Streetcar Named Desire. And two years later, 1949, um, he bought a house in Key West and settled into the community for the next 30 years. Jimmy Buffett, the famous singer, began his career with Key West. And on the right, the cream color building the San Carlos Institute, founded in 1871 by the Cuban community of Key West. And it's a Cuban American Heritage and Cultural Center. And on the left is the Strand Theater. The second floor level, very beautiful and colorful, looks very much like a child's birthday cake. That's a symbol of the gay community. 
There's a very large gay community in Key West. And that's the symbol for the, uh, for the gay community. I'll see you, man. Ahead, we're going to turn right. We're going to go into Bahama Village. Let's play some uh, Bahamian music for you. that announces the entrance into Bahama Village, settled in the early 1800s by Bahamians, mainly of African descent. They work in the salvaging, sponging, and fishing industries. Many of their descendants still live here. This street, Petronia Street in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, there used to be a lot of jazz clubs here. Lots of entertainment on this street. In 1974, the Navy left town. At the end of the Vietnam War, the military was downsizing. It closed all the bases in Key West. That really had an impact on the economy in Key West. This area went into an economic decline. Today, there's the Main Street Funding Program. Local entrepreneurs were working very, very hard to revitalize the area. Petronia Street in Key West, a very beautiful, interesting, exciting part of the island. And head on the right corner, this blue building is blue, have been a hub of the neighborhood since 1884. Originally it was a saloon, but in the 1930s it was a blue goose arena. He's got boxing matches there with the local legends. And on the right corner of the blue building, that's Johnson's Grocery. There's been a grocery store on that street corner for the last 75 years. Last 25 years on the operated by the Johnson family. Key West has changed a great deal over the last 100 years. 100 years ago, we had 300 churches and 30 bars. Today we've got 300 bars and 30 churches. <laughs> Isn't that the same old town it used to be? And on the right, set back from the street, the former Zion Primitive Baptist Church from the late 1800s till 30 years ago. That was a church. Today's a very creatively restored private home. <laughs> And on the left is the Key West Cemetery, built in 1847. Graves are above ground, that's because of the hard coral ground. It's very difficult to dig down in there. We also have a high water table. On the far left side is a memorial to the U.S. 27 of her soldiers are buried there. That's the main that sunk in Havana Harbor. Led to the U.S. involvement in the Spanish-American War. It's interesting to walk around the cemetery, see what you find there, something that I find most amusing. Are the epitaphs on the tombstones that reflect a Key Wester somewhat odd sense of humor. Let me give you some examples. A woman buried there by the name of Betty Roberts. She was a well-known hypochondriac. She passed away. She had written on her tombstone, I told you I was sick. <laughs> And there was a man, Thomas Romer, who lived to be 108 years old. When he passed away, it was written on his tombstone, he was a good man for 63 of 108 years. Then there was a man, a gentleman, shall we say, who had a reputation for sleeping about town. But when he passed away, his wife wrote on his tombstone, at least I know where he's sleeping tonight. <laughs> Don't tell me something. Who got the final say in that little relationship? Nothing is great, but nothing is great. Put two stones right over there.
This one had just begun if you'd like to join in. You know what else they said? This house is gorgeous. There was no water, running water here until 1940. Guys, if we just come right down along the railing a little bit more, we do have to keep the Yeah. Same way I came in and came back. Right there, right there. Thank you. Thank you. No. <laughs> like, forget it. Go away. <laughs> See, his toe looks like he's got a thumb. See it? He's Bicycle fork. Yeah, it kind of looks like that, doesn't it? Could be, yeah, bicycle reflectors, that would make sense. 